My name is uh, James Kinyangi. I work for the uh, Climate Change Agriculture and Food Security Program. I'm the program leader for East Africa. I think there were a number of challenges that were highlighted in this session. I think some of them were to do with uh, metrics around measuring um, community-based adaptation. Uh, I think what came out very clearly is that we need the input of the communities in formulating the metrics to measure adaptation uh, because essentially adaptation is a measure of uh, resilience and to be able to understand resilience I think we need to put together the not just the biophysical aspects but also the social aspects uh, and so I think uh, one of the challenges that was discussed was how to arrive at those metrics and I think some examples were given uh, where you know you let communities define uh, their own processes and then from those processes you measure any changes that take place and, then, and therefore you can derive indicators from those changes and monitor those indicators over time. Uh, I, I think there was also the issue of uh, uh, how to finance local adaptation um, and how to monitor the financing of local adaptation. There was the realization that in themselves communities are already doing a lot, so there was a recommendation to value also uh, the work of the communities, and the investments of the communities and also to bring those in tandem with uh, any support that's coming from climate-related local-level funding. I would say that the area with the least agreement was uh, the area around who is responsible for uh, defining how communities work around adaptation um, and I think there was mention uh, that you have a top-down process where you know the countries or the sub-national governments uh, may define what constitutes uh, an adaptation program uh, and then specify how local communities fit into that program and I think Caitlin made it very clear that I think we need a bottom-up process and we need to learn from the experiences of the communities in advising policymakers the sorts of um, uh, programs to incorporate in the local development plans. So, so I think the question of as to whether you can do it in a top-down process, which is the more institutionalized one or the more informal process of doing a bottom-up uh, I think is the area where we did not have much agreement. I think one that was highlighted is the need for research to work very closely with uh, development and communities uh, in order to find technologies that are appropriate for local contexts. Uh, I think it was appreciated that uh, that uh, the communities are already doing a lot of adaptation work uh, and that uh, it's not always the case that uh, solutions that are developed, tried and tested elsewhere would work within a, a local context, I think. So I think there was an emphasis uh, to let the communities develop uh, their own locally appropriate uh, technologies. Um, there was also the uh, uh, the realization that uh, uh, if we are to really have a, a truly community-based uh, adaptation focus that supports uh, food security, uh, I think we need to recognize the, the rich distribution of foods uh, within communities at the local level and we need to appreciate that diversity and we need to build on that diversity as a strength. So I, I think the fact that communities have a lot of knowledge, especially indigenous knowledge, about their own practices, about their own foods, I think was appreciated uh, and it was recommended that going forward 
we should recognize that as a basis for building resilience.